Hey, my name is Bhavani Kola. Welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will be learning how to create this fun interactive graphs and math lessons. I will leave the download link in the description box below. So please feel free to customize it and edit it for your students. So without further ado, let's go ahead and jump right into it. Here I am on my blank presentation. So click view. Make sure you check your guides so that your graphs are centered. Let's go ahead and insert our X and Y axis. Insert, shape, double arrows, press and hold your shift button, and here is my Y axis. Insert, shape, double arrows, press and hold your shift button, here is your X axis. Control A, Control G to group it. Once that's done, insert, shape, I'm inserting my parabola, so curve. Press and hold your shift button. Your graph goes down. Let go of your mouse. Come all the way up and double click. That's your first parabola. You can stretch it and you can increase the size of it. I'm going to make sure I have my X and Y intercepts. I think I like that. Format. Format shape. I'm going to make sure I have a bright color, increase the width of it, change the color of my X and Y axis and increase the width as well. Perfect. Right click, format, background. I'm going to change the background color to black. Now once that's done, I'm going to insert my axis of symmetry. So insert, shapes, a straight line, Press and hold your shift button. And there I have a perfect straight line. I'm going to increase the width of it and change the color to bright yellow and change the type to dashed lines. And here is my axis of symmetry. I'm gonna increase it just a little bit. The next thing I'm gonna do is insert my buttons where my students click on them and the animations come to life. So the first one is for X-intercept. Control and drag, Y-intercept. Control and drag, one is for axis of symmetry and other one is for the vertex. Once I have that, I'm gonna select all of these. Make sure I have no line. In the shape options, I am going to give them a 3D effect. Once that is done, I'm going to insert shapes and I'm going to insert my callouts. Callouts are the best way instead of having your text boxes and arrows. You're going to see why in a minute. I need two callouts for my X and Y intercepts. So my first callout is for my X intercept. And as you can see, this little yellow button, drag it and point it out to your X-intercept. As simple as that. Control, drag on the other side, move the yellow one to your X-intercept. And with one click, you have a call out and pointing towards your X and Y intercepts. Control, Y intercept, control and vertex, control, and axis of symmetry. Again, I'm going to select all of these, no line, and I'm gonna give them that 3D effect. Shape options, shadow, 3D format, and pick whatever effect you want. Now I wanna make sure that my tabs and my callouts match the colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and change all the colors. So these two are my x-intercepts and I want them to be red. So select and change the color to red. I'm gonna do the same for the rest of them and I'm gonna be right back. All right, once this is done, let's go ahead and insert the x-intercepts, y-intercepts and their definition. All you have to do is double click and insert x-intercept. Let me go ahead and fill all of them and I'll be right back. So I went ahead and added the text to all my rectangular boxes and my callouts. Now the next step is to bring this graph to life. So let's go ahead and add some animations. I'm going to click on animation. I'm going to click on my callout box and I want it to grow and turn. 
So please play with these animations and see what you like. This is the one that I like. So once I have decided what I want, I'm going to click on the call out and I'm going to use my animation painter. So you will double click until you get the animation brush. And once that's done, go ahead, copy the animation to all your call outs. All right, now that the animations have been copied, the next step is to add triggers. Before you add triggers, let's go to Home, Select, Selection Pane, and name these rectangle boxes just so that when you're adding your triggers, it becomes much more easier for you to identify. So when I click on my x-intercept, as you can see, this has been highlighted. That's my x-intercept. When I click on my vertex, it is the vertex. All you have to do is double click and type in the name that you want. I kept it same as the boxes. So when I'm adding triggers, it's easy for me to find out. So once I finish adding the names to all four of my rectangular boxes, now it's time to go ahead and add those triggers. I'm going to close the selection pane, go back to animation, animation pane and I will start with my y-intercept call out. So I'm going to click on my y-intercept and I want this animation to come to life only when I click on my y-intercept rectangular box. So once I click on it, as you can see, this has been highlighted. I'm going all the way to this arrow, click on timings, triggers, start effect on click off, Go all the way down until you find your y-intercept. Now let's go ahead and check for axis of symmetry. So when I click on my axis of symmetry callout, as you can see, it has been highlighted. The same procedure again. Timings, trigger, select, start effect on, axis of symmetry. Where is it? I'm going to go ahead and do the rest for all the rest of the callouts. As I have two x-intercepts, all I have to do is add a trigger for the first x-intercept and drag the next one below it and make sure it plays with the previous. Now, once all the triggers and animations are done, let's go ahead and check this out. All right, x-intercept, boom. Vertex, boom. Axis of symmetry, perfect. Y-intercept, perfect. Now that we have seen how to create interactive graphs, let's go ahead and take a look on how to create the simple math lessons with examples and graphs. So here I am on a blank presentation again. Right click, format, background. I want to give it that notebook effect. So I'm going to click on picture and texture, insert from the file. I have saved it on my desktop. Select the one that I want and insert. Once this is done, I'm going to go ahead and add text boxes for each letter. So one is for Y, one is for equal to, one for M, one for X plus N, B. You get the idea. Once this is done, I'm going to select all of these and make sure I align them to the top. Increase the width. This is good enough. Click on my text options and I'm going to add it a shadow so I'm going to click on the reflection and pick the shadow that I want I think I like that that's good enough change the font and I'm going to move this all the way to the top here and I'm just going to arrange them one next to the other I want to change the color of M to bright red and the color of B as well now once this is done I want to go ahead and add the formula for the slope so I'm going to click on insert equation and here I have a brand new equation. I'm going to say slope equal to. I want it in the format of a fraction. So I'm going to click on fraction and pick the style that I want. I think I want this one. I'm going to say slope is rise over run, which is nothing but change in Y, change in X. Once this is done, home, I'm going to increase the size. I'm going to add an outline, increase the weight of the outline, and give it that sketched look. That's perfect. I'm going to add another text box and say Y intercept. Y intercept is the point where the graph touches Y axis once that's done. Again, I'm going to give it the same effect and the sketched look. 
So right click on your text box, outline, sketched, and there I have it. I also want to go ahead and add an example. I'm simply going to copy it from this one. So here I'm adding an example. And now I want to go ahead and add a graph. So I'm going to create a graph. To do that, I'm going to click insert a rectangle. I do not want to fill this with anything, but I want the line to be nice and black and I want to change the width of it. Once that's done, I'm going to insert my X and Y axis. Press and hold your shift button. That's your X axis. Sorry, that was your Y axis. Press and hold your shift button and that's your X axis. And I'm going to change the color. I'm going to select both of these and increase the width. I'm going to select all of this and I'm going to group it. Control G. And now I'm going to insert a line. Press and hold your shift button and there is your line. Change the color of it so students understand it's a line that you're trying to focus on. That's perfect. Now I want to insert a call out just to mention my y-intercept and my x-intercept. So there is my y-intercept. Call outs are so much easier to do than a rectangular box and an arrow. So control and bring it all the way down here and there is my x-intercept. So I'm simply going to double click and say x intercept and this is b which is my y intercept. Make sure your callouts point out to the right direction. There you go, perfect. And once this is done, the next step is to go ahead and add those buttons when my students click on it, the graphs and the examples and the formulas come to life. So to do that, I'm going to click Insert, Shape, Rounded Corner. So this is going to be my first button here. Control and drag it all the way down. Control and drag it all the way up here. I'm going to select my rectangular boxes, no line. I'm going to change the color to green and I'm going to give it that 3D effect like always. I'm going to go ahead and add some text. All right, once all of this is done, now the next step is to go ahead and animate each one of these. So I'm going to click on my text box here, animation, and I want it to wipe. Not wipe from the bottom, but I'm going to make sure I click and say wipe from the left. Go back here again. I want it to wipe again, wipe from left. There I have it. The graph as well. I want to make sure Mm, yeah, I want the graph to come up something like that. Perfect. So even this text example, I want it to wipe. I want it to wipe from the left, but I don't want it to wipe as an object. So I'm going to click on this little arrow timing text animation, and I want it to wipe as a um, paragraph. And let's see what happens. That's exactly how I want it. Perfect. So once the animations are done, the next step is to make sure we create and use those triggers. To do that, again, I want to make sure you understand that you have to name these rectangles so you know exactly what they are. To do that, click on your home, select, selection pane, click on the rectangle, and I know this is the rectangle where I have my graph, and this rectangle is where my students click and the example pops out. So that's an example. So it's always nice to name your rectangles because when you're adding triggers, it makes your life much more easier. So let's click on animation, animation pane, and I want the slope is equal to rise over run to pop up when I click on so start effect when I click on the letter M. So there you go. I just added my trigger. Now I'm going to click on my text box here and this has been highlighted. Timing, triggers, start the effect on and I want this to animate when my students click on the letter B. So now you know why I had different text boxes for each letters. This is my graph and I want the graph to animate when my students click on the tab or the rectangular box that says graph. Perfect. And I want this to animate when my students click on 
view an example tab. Now let's go ahead and test this out. So M, B, example, and graph. Perfect. Another variation of this could be transformation of graphs where all the transformations are animated and coming to life. Please stay tuned for many more interactive tutorials with PowerPoint like self-grading quiz, click and reveal, animated syllabus, and much, much more. Would love to hear your feedback, so please leave a comment below and let me know what would you like to see more in my videos, what worked and what did not. I hope you learned something new today. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please make sure you like, subscribe, and if you think it's worth sharing, please go ahead and do so. They could be an educator who might really need these animations for their classes. And always remember, happy teaching and please take care of yourself.